You can step in. See, I found this. The most powerful things in God, the most powerful keys and revelations are so simple. See, it leads on to this. You know, in Matthew 18, uh, 2 and 4, I love this verse. It says, and Jesus, and it says, and Jesus called the little child to himself, and he set him in the midst of his disciples and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little child, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. See, what did Christ mean? Become in simple faith like a small child. See, I was trying to analyze God in my mind. I was trying to work out things in my mind. But small children just accept. Children don't argue. They just accept. It's, well, if Dad says that, it must be true. And you know what? We need to come to that place of just accepting that God has chosen you. You are ambassador of Christ. You can open that door like a little child entering a new realm of God. And so I did that. And Jesus said, he followed on this verse, he said, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. To come humbly like a little child. You know, often in our society, children are saying, Oh, you know, you know, you know get all the kids out of the meeting. They're going to disturb the preacher. You know, I put the children to one side. Children go to children's church. You know, we can send children out, but to God, they are the, they are the greatest in the kingdom. And I found this it's by, it's by simplicity of childlike faith. Powerful key. But you know, it's more than that. It's, it's more than, than, than a knowing that we abide in Christ. It's more than uh, having the word of God. It's more than knowing we have the authority. It's more than coming in the simplicity of faith like a child. The Bible says that we need to have a change of mind. You know what? Our mind, you know, for me personally, my mind needed to change. I had all these ideas in my head for many years, most of my Christian life. Ideas and attitudes about the Bible and God. But you know, the Bible talks about we need to have a change of mind. Our, our minds need to be renewed. And if you look over here at, Pro at Proverbs 4.20, it says this. Uh, 420 on to 23, it says, My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life for those who find them, and they are healing to all their flesh. This is, this is quite uh, amazing. It says um, how the word of God brings life. In fact, the word of God hidden in your heart can bring healing. In verse 23 goes on to say, Keep and guard your heart of all vigilance, and above all that you guard out of it, for out of it flows a spring of life. See, we need to hide this word in our heart. You know, King David said, Your word I've hidden my heart, that I might, might not sin against you. Something happens as we hide the word of God. We, this word is living God. This word is life. So it's very easy to come in our minds and come out of our intellect. But this word is life coming from the truth of, of the word of God. When it comes to healing, we must understand this. Sometimes our mind needs to change and our mind can only be really changed by the renewing of the word. You see, many years ago when I became a Christian, I opened my heart, I received Christ. I was changed spiritually. And then I embarked on this journey where God did to change the John Mellor's way of thinking. And really, the most powerful way to change your mind is a revelation of the Holy Spirit, the rima of God's Word, revelation of the Word that comes into your heart. That's what brings change. And, my, and the more I've gotten into the Word of God, the more I've confessed it and believed it and stood on it and accepted it by a simple childlike faith, the more my life has changed. So sometimes we're, we're coming to pray for the sick and we're trying to get through all the stuff of the mind. Why aren't people healed? Why isn't this happening? Why can't God use me? Or can God use me? And our mind gets in the way. You see, the Bible says this very clearly, that we have a soul. And your soul is your mind and your will and your emotions. You know what? Your mind can get in the way. You know, you know your, your mind is a powerful thing. And uh, your mind, your intellect, we can analyze things. You know, we can see somebody in a wheelchair or stage, you know, late stage cancer. Your mind can tell you, you know what? 
The doctors say that person can't be healed. The doctors say that that's incurable. And so you so the way your mind can set up, set up this barrier. And, and then there's a will. You know, you know, you have a human will. And sometimes we can say, well, I'm going to see them heal. But we're trying so hard in a human will to make it happen. But it's not by your will. It's by the grace and the power of God. And, and of course, your emotions. And what happens if you see somebody terminally ill or sick or in pain or suffering? Oh, the poor person. You know, we, we can, of course, we feel compassion, empathy for people. But we can't allow our emotions to lead us down another path. We must see it's by faith of God. It's by the Spirit. It's not by might nor by power. It's by the Spirit, says the Lord. And so as we need to understand these things are spiritual. And so our so human soul can get in the way when it comes to having your, your, your mind changed. Sometimes we need to change our mind. as the things embedded. But people are healed by faith in the truth and the power of the Word of God. You know, John Mellon cannot heal. Only Christ can heal. You can't heal of your own accord. It's by the grace of God, by Christ abiding in you through the Holy Spirit. And so this motions and this will, this stuff, sometimes our mind needs to be changed.